What's going on, guys? I hope you're having a good week so far. I uh, wanted to kind of hop on here and add some, uh, add a recap for the previous cash days that I just attended uh, the, the Sunday before this video. Uh, I'll kind of go over both the cars, but I only ran the one, the Supra. The other car I'll get to towards the end of the video. I'm actually going to be building a 13.5 car. And uh, I really, I mean, I, I didn't have a, there's no need for me to have two outlaw cars because you just kind of end up fighting yourself. So I figured I'll throw the slash in the 13.5 class and I'll kind of just go over what I've done so far to it. And also I'll go over the setup I'll be running as well. And I'll, of course, if you guys have any tips and tricks there, 13.5, obviously it's a little bit more strict um, just to be more competitive. So, you know, feel free to throw them in the comments below, but we'll get right into it and I'll push that out of the way. Sorry if that was loud. Um, the Supra did good. <laughs> I will say uh, this is my third cash days and I actually came in first. So we actually do an 80, 20 split walk, uh, walked away with uh, 250 bucks in my pocket and nonetheless, if you haven't grabbed any Corey Graham belts for your tires, I won on some freaking Hoosiers <laughs> in an outlaw class. So, so yeah, the car is still dusty. I, st I haven't dusted it off at all. I haven't sprayed it off. Um, so you can see kind of dust all over that. So I kind of go over some of the stuff on the outside that I've upgraded uh, also to the cars getting obviously a little bit of, uh, war damage there but I, I really really wanted to use this body and it's it served me well i haven't i haven't flipped it at all really i'm um, just from that last little spill from the last cash day so the car's doing pretty good there um oh also too i'll just kind of start from the rear here i uh i added some uh, traxxas wheelie bars and also i had some extra bearings and uh, it comes with bearings i think i had some upgraded ones just to help kind of help it uh with that with that rolling, uh, if I if I get down there, um, the 10 inch RCR I wheelie bar helped out a bunch. Uh, I think I have this, the suspension pretty pretty dialed in. I'm still using the <clears throat> the Proline Power Strokes with some 42.5 weight team associated uh, shock fluid, and I'm using the second to stiffest spring uh, that they offer for the Power Strokes. So. Just to kind of give you some insight there. And then um, there's a lot of naysayers, honestly, on, on, on the interwebs on Facebook about stretching tires. But uh, the 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 solid setup that I, I think that works. Um, so these are some J Concepts Starfish bead locks. And of course, there's some Hoosiers on there. And then I'm using the, uh, I think the flaw with these wheels is there's 10 holes behind here. Um, and J Concepts only allows you to use five. So, I, I mean, more security, the better. So I'm using some Backyards RC Carbon 10-hole uh, beadlock rings. Um, and I'll just throw some uh, some liquid chrome pin on those bad boys. I mean, it's like the most scale, probably, and functional setup that I have. Uh, in the fleet of tires, um, obviously, if you've seen my preview, previous video, you know that I have quite a few tires. Uh, but yeah, you know, any, any setup can really win as long as it's, you know, fine tuned, um, either way. So I'll kind <clears> of <throat> take off the lid here and show you my, uh, I guess updated, uh, chassis. So. Uh, we'll start up front here. Uh, the car was getting rather light. So what I did was I had uh, some washers. I added them up to the front here just to kind of keep it down. Um, cause the car, I mean, when at the end of the track, it starts fluttering the front end. So as much, you know, if I can keep the front end down, the better. Um, but obviously sticking out here like a sore thumb are these massive air dams. Uh, there's a company on eBay. I, I mean, I don't want to butcher the name, but, uh, that's where I ordered them from. They actually sell aero kits for the front, so like a front splitter that comes out like way out here, which I did not want. Um, and then they have like a rear diffuser that comes out for the DR and I think the Nova. So, but I just ordered these sides just to see how they worked. Uh, I will say it, it definitely helps keep the car pretty straight all the way down the track. Uh, but I will say old girl is heavy. 
I mean, this car is, I mean, it's all of, I mean, I mean, it's probably north of six pounds, which, uh, you know, obviously that's not where you want to be, but hey, if it works, it works. Uh, and then it just happened to uh, work in my favor this past Sunday. Uh, walked away with that $250 pot with after the 80-20 split. Uh, it was a good day. So um, kind of jump in here. So I'm still using the CNHL 6600 long pack. 120C, 240C burst um, battery packs. They, you know, I I have four of them, and I believe they're like thirty four ninety nine a piece. I have like the four. I charge them the night before on a low. So for me, as far as charging, I do a long slow charge just be so it, it kind of doesn't over overheat it at any point. At uh, I believe it's three amps. So yeah, it's pretty pretty low. Uh, and then I'm still using the Traxxas TQ transmitter. It's like a $40 radio, so you don't have to get real fancy. Um, you know, some guys use the Futabas, Sanwas, um, what are the other ones? The Spectrums. Those are all great transmitters, but honestly, I mean, a remote for this, it's not gonna, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. It's not gonna be a, it's not gonna be a game stopper. You know, I've, I've been three cash days. The first one I went to the, uh, semifinals, I got third. My second cash days, I got second. And my third cash days, I got first. So, I mean, I, I think that speaks volumes as far as a transmitter. Um, but, like I said, that's just my opinion. I'm not going to talk down on anybody else for using whatever transmitter they want. Uh, but, uh, what else here? The ESC, I did relocate it. I just cut out a piece of Lexan and made my own little brace there. Um, it was getting rather hot. I mean, after like two or three runs, I mean, this sucker was, it was burning up and the, and the gearing's not very aggressive. So I, I knew I needed to get some air circulation. So I just kind of put a little piece of foam down there so the battery can basically stay put. I'm still running the five millimeter bullets straight to the, straight to the, the battery there, as well as, and I'm still using the Savox servo. Up here, it's just a metal gear. I think it's like 30 bucks or something, 25, 30 bucks. It's nothing crazy. It's just a metal gear in there. And then, uh, like I said, the power strokes are still in the back. I did add this fan. There's a, um, I just kind of went on a shopping spree on Amazon, honestly. And it's just a little, comes with two little screws. You add it to the, uh, what is this here? The, um, shot, uh, not shock tower, the, uh, body post there. And then, uh, and uh, it keeps the motor pretty cool. I mean, I'll, I'll turn it on here. I mean, it's got some, uh, it's got some, some blowing power. So yeah. So that was a uh, a must. Oh, unplug that and. Uh, I'm still running the Reedy Sonic 3.5. Uh, this was pretty much the motor that won in Vegas. I don't know if it's exactly a 3.5, but I know it was a Reedy product, so I I agree. It's working great. Uh, the inner transmission parts I upgraded as well. I'm running a Serpent diff with 5,000 uh, weight diff fluid. So there's a a little bit of slip there, just just a little bit. So it before, I mean, it was just like su not super watery, but I don't know. I don't even know what the stock diff fluid weight is, but uh, it wasn't to my liking. And also, too, I'm running an uh, Evotech idler, and then I I just added a new uh, aluminum shaft. The one before has kind of had a little bit of a um, a little bit of wobble, so I just. Change it out, change out the bearings as well to uh, some just newer ones. But uh, but yeah, it worked great. And then uh, as far as gearing, uh, I'm running. What did I end up running? Um, so a 19 and a 84 spur. So that was what I was running. And honestly, I wasn't running a whole lot of RPMs. Um, I've ran this motor out to 99,000 RPMs, uh, but I think I pulled the log after, and I think it was only like at 52, 55,000. So there's definitely more in this motor. It's just, uh, I just had a conservative setup. Um, just wanted to go A to B, and it ended up working, um, working out for me. 
So uh, what else here? Um, but yeah, yeah, the shocks here. Those are the those those power strokes, and they're I would say they're pretty smooth. I, I try to change out the fluid every so often uh, just to kind of keep up on the maintenance for the for the car. Um, but yeah, like I mentioned, guys, before you know you don't have to have a whole lot of money in these things. Obviously, you do have to spend a little bit, but uh, um, these videos, you know, I've seen a lot of YouTubers and all these to me are really suggestions. Like my setup's not going to work exactly for you and somebody else's setup is not going to work for me. All I, all I try to do is kind of give tips and tricks uh, and just a little bit of know-how to uh, kind of put your money where you need it. I, I highly suggest getting a good ESC, a good solid motor. Um, and it never hurts to test on maybe, you know, three sets of tires, just different ones, you know, belted, non-belted. Um, soft, medium, clay, just to see what works best for you. Uh, I, I I was actually surprised these these soft tires lasted um, this long. Uh, and another thing too, um, I actually have my own carpet pad that I made, uh, and I'll, I'll just kind of give you my little little trick that I do. So a lot of people when they go up and do their burnout, they will if they're doing a carpet burnout, what they'll do is they'll do their burnout on on uh, the carpet first. Get them a little warm, and then they'll put it on the concrete, which to me feels like it. You know, if the concrete's a little dirty. You're basically heating up your tires, and then those tires are soaking up that dirt. What I do is I do a little rake on the concrete, um, just to get them a little warm, and then I finish my burnout on the carpet. So, on in that aspect, what you're doing is, or that I've noticed is heat finish heating up your tires on carpet and it doesn't eat them up as far as killing your tread but also it cleans them so and then once i do that i bring up the car where i want it drop it and for those first five to ten feet the cars should launch pretty straight and it did um for the most part uh was it that on on sunday for the cash days um but yeah that's just my routine uh, and that's all about you know, your preference. Uh, but I just, that's just what has worked for me. Uh, like I said, it's just, su just suggestions. Try both. Um, if you want to do a normal burnout and then one on a carpet or one on the carpet and then one on concrete or asphalt, see which one works better. That's, that's the only thing that I've done you know, in my personal car just to see what works better. And that's my routine. I've done it every single time before every race. And uh, I think it's, I think it's a, a solid, set up. Um, maybe the next cash days, I will probably take these off just to see if I can pick up a couple of tenths. Um, but I do know the car is still, I mean, as heavy as this car is, it's still floating at the end. So it's, uh, I know it's going pretty quick. I, we did have the DTS set up. Um, unfortunately we couldn't get any times, but it was a, definitely a solid two, five pass at, I don't know, probably 58, 60. So nothing, nothing, um, crazy there. Um, but yeah, I will, put the body back on this and kind of set it to the side the side here come on of course it never wants to go on whenever whenever I'm trying to do this so I'll push that out of the way and then bring in the other car so I've pretty much been <laughs> kind of babying this body I, I wanted to keep it as a show body, um, just because I put so much time into it as far as like building the wing and trimming it out and building, you know, a splitter for it, uh, trying to lay down the candy just right. And I mean, it's, I mean, it's, there's no like thick spots or, you know, the candy laid down pretty well. Um, but with my winnings for the cash days, I'm actually going to turn this car into a, uh, 13.5 car. So I did order a Trinity. Uh, motor from Rotor Ron, and I guess it's their Ultra Torque or something like that motor, the drag spec motor. So I know it should be, it should come in relatively balanced and it's kind of specific for drag. Um, I know we kind of have to run like a blinky setup, uh, but my local track, right? They actually, a lot of guys run a 3800 kV motor, and I'm um, so I'm just actually going to go off of national. Um, classes and just go with the 13.5. That way, if I take this car anywhere, I don't have to worry about um, not fitting in a class just because my motor's, you know, three turns higher or something. So, yeah, um, this is, you know, these are, I finally had a good place to test my DE minis. 
So there's these are their 1.7 by 2.2s. Uh, I mean, they're they're absolutely tiny. <laughs> and so, but yeah, this is almost, it's almost like a. Uh, there's like a back in the day, it should be a true 10.5. So this is actually like a like an 8.5 radial looking car. Um, so I got it. I got it setting pretty low. I'll kind of show you how how low I have this thing sitting compared to the super there. And once I kind of finally get the the car settled, it'll probably be a little bit lower in the rear. Um, but yeah, so the speed should obviously be a little bit slower. So I, you know, I shouldn't have to worry about fighting this thing flipping at all. I shouldn't, you know, not to say that I won't, but then I'll just, I'll just paint another body. Um, I'm pretty partial to these Novas. Uh, this is my third Nova body. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it's uh, obviously a no bar car class. So I took off the rear bar there. Also too, I'm curious to see if they'll say anything about the mid motor configuration. Um, but since my motor is underpowered, technically, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what uh, what that uh, what that holds. Um, but yeah, I've already started kind of messing with it. Uh, currently, I do have a 4.5 turn in here. Um, I finally got a program card and a cable for this car for the Beast Pro 160 amp. So you know, heads up here. I've I've searched all over YouTube, Google. And Facebook and nobody has ever basically ran this ESC. Uh, I mean, honestly, it's pretty much a knockoff XR10 Pro or a Hobby Star. Um, but if you buy this ESC, it's a great ESC. It has awesome tunability. Um, has has a, a, it comes with a fan. It comes with a little capacitors there. But and of all the instructions that I've read, it was always telling me to tune the ESC with this wire here. But after talking with a few folks, you actually have to tune it from this little cable, which does not exist with any of the packaging. So I had to basically go to, was it, uh, I ordered it from A Main Hobbies. This is just a Macklin signal cable, and it goes right in the PGM port. Uh, and you have turbo, you have boost, you have drag, you have brake acceleration frequency, all of the big time stuff that you get in any of the other ESCs, but in a cheaper price point. I think this ESC was like $120, $130. So if you're balling on a budget, sure, why not? I I'd suggest giving it a try. Um, you know, hit me up. I can help you guys get, um, in contact with a, this signal cable that does not come with it. Um, also, too, you have to buy a program card, which is like thirty bucks or twenty dollars. So, signal cable is like ten bucks shipped. ESC is like one hundred and thirty bucks, and then the program card is another thirty. So, for one hundred and seventy, just say hundred, call it one hundred seventy-five bucks. You'll have one hundred and twenty amp or one hundred and sixty amp ESC ready to go. Um, but uh, but yeah, um, I'm gonna be running that with the thirteen point five motor. I'll rip this four point nine five out. I'll put it on the back burner. I'll put it in the box, you know, have it for safekeeping. Um, one thing I did do is I swapped out the zero degree front bulkhead. I put the plastic one back on. I had like a, this like broke one. It just broke one of the tabs off here and I threw it back on there. Um, I'm still running the DR10 front shocks. Um, it's very, very springy. Um, still messing with that. And then here's the pretty, pretty smooth, nothing too crazy. Um, I'll just leave all of my wheelie bar stuff back here. It won't hurt, won't hurt to leave it on there. Um, and then of course I still have my, my sway bar. So, uh, but yeah, that'll, that'll be my 13.5 car. Uh, hopefully it does pretty well. Just trying to start up a, a class down here, kind of like a spec. Oh, also too, I'll, I'll trim these down. I won't leave those that long. Um, and of course my battery go here, so it'll kind of bring it down a little bit just to have all my weight forward. So I don't have to worry about this thing taking flight. Um, cause obviously there's no bar. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's the 13.5 car going to happen. Um, I do have some DE accelerator front wheels coming. So I'll, I'll, I'll get rid of these 
and I'll probably put these on the super just so they match chrome and chrome. Uh, and then I'll, I'll do some a chrome pin accent to match the front. And 13.5 car is a wrap. Um, but yeah, but please let me know in the comments. Um, I haven't read up on the rules completely. Is a mid-motor completely outlawed in the 13.5 class? Because I know you have to have a plastic chassis, which I still do. And it's a, uh, it's a slash based car. There's no carbon fiber. I mean, there's upgraded, I guess not upgraded, but really, I mean, they're, they're heavier than plastic. Um, aluminum shock tower mounts. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I guess I'll, I'll wait and see what, uh, what they say in tech if it's not allowed. But, uh, but yeah, that's going to be the next car in the, in the, I guess, arsenal or fleet or whatever. But yeah. I just love how low this car is. I'm gonna have to pick it up. It's not. It can't. It can't obviously stay that low. Um, but uh, but it looks good. That's half the battle. So, but uh, but yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, thanks all for the noob folks that have uh, liked and subscribed to the channel. Um, once I get the 13.5 motor in there, I'll I'll do some test runs and um, hopefully I can uh, get this sucker going straight, which I think I can. Um, obviously if I can get the outlaw to go decently straight, this one will be no, a no brainer. Um, and also to the slash I've had for eight years. So I kind of know the temperament and I know who built it <laughs> so I can blame him. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below, have any suggestions for new content. Uh, but if you haven't already like, and subscribe, and I will catch everybody on the next one. Peace.